Good evening, this is the news. After Grand Theft Auto released their new trailer, the Florida Joker has claimed his likeness was used and should therefore be compensated. The Florida man said in a tweet that he would settle for nothing less than $2 million cash or a few hits of meth. Mm, makes sense. Musician Kid Rock said he supports Bud Light again after boycotting them because of Dylan Mulvaney. Bud Light responded by saying that they're really happy that they have another middle-aged man that looks like your least favorite aunt. <laughs> in Texas, a high school basketball player and his family violently attacked his coach in a parking lot because he was benched during a game. Hmm. Afterwards, the coach was awarded two free throws and the family was given a flagrant foul. <sighs> Kanye West made an interesting fashion choice at his concert this week, sporting a pointed black mask. The design is from the new Calvin Klein line. More like 6,000. <laughs> and welcome wow. to Normal World. I'm Dave Landau. I'm Quarter Black Garrett. I'm Angela. And joining us today, uh, talk show host, author, and friend of mine, please welcome, Gavin McGinnis. Ow! Hello! Welcome back, bro. Well, I guess your first time. I've, I've streamed with you before. Yes, we've streamed Last time together. We streamed, uh, you streamed. Yeah, we streamed at a Mets <laughs> game. We were both went to the bathroom at the same mm -hmm, time. Together, crossed them. We crossed them, and that was a violation. Mm -hmm. And we hit it off. That's what a sword fight is, right? Yeah. Yes. Like, what are the rules of a sword fight? I think it's whoever finishes first loses. Yes. <laughs> yes. And okay. but but you How cross you each it? other's streams. If you cross the streams. You don't want to go, you can't twist, because if you twist, it can end. Wait, so mm. how do you sword start fight? the sword fight, though? Do you slap somebody with, like, a glove or something? And what are the odds you're going to start at the exact same time? Well, I think the sword fight used to start because it was the trough. Oh. I always thought that you were actually, I legitimately, Touching? yeah, I thought Hitting that it was penises? like, frank, 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 no. Like, yeah, I didn't but, know it was a pee uh, no. thing. Run the numbers on that, like do the math, like bonk, bonk, what are you doing? It's not enough yeah, space. Yeah, you're just fighting swords. You, you, but how do you, like it's you bonk, tough. you knock out the other guy's dick out, it's like oh. unconscious? You just cut whoever comes first. Whoever. <laughs> <laughs> or goes soft first. Uh. Yeah. Who's yes. the loser really in that scenario? I don't know. Whoever I don't know. It's everyone. Crying. So you mean everybody wins? Is that the name of the so, game? so, if you're coming, you're winning. I don't think I've ever... <laughs> Sword fought. I don't think no, I definitely I so. peed at the same time as someone. Yeah, you talk about it yeah. all the time. I probably talked about sword fighting for a cumulative six hours of my life. Yeah. But actually, in battle shits, sword fighting. You know, battle shits where you sit, you're in stalls next to each other, take a dump, try to make sound, take a dump, try to make sound. You've to to make guess. I'm not familiar sound. with that. Oh, okay, well, or when you we would have sword fighting in high school, we had poo downs. Where we would declare a poo down, and you had to run up to the bathroom and shit, and whoever had the biggest one wins. That's very similar. And we went, we went to one, one time we went there, and there was a turd that was 13 inches long. I tried to flush John it. John Holmes? It, 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 <laughs> it didn't go down, it just created a bridge when I flushed. Like it was, oh, it's like, it stood its ground. It just, yeah. You call, you, what you got, bitch? Rough. So then I picked fiber. it up and held it in the air, and everyone screamed. And uh, we made a flyer that said, Poo fans. And it had a big turd. Uh, and it said, <laughs> We saw this 13 inch monolithic poo. Uh, we want to meet you. So if you see this flyer, meet us at 2 p.m. This is 24 hours after we discovered it. And the teachers cared so little about us and our lives that uh, they would do photocopies for you. So I was like, hey, can you do a bunch of photocopies of this? And three different teachers made me like 15 copies of wow. it. They didn't even look at it. It was a toilet with a poo in it. <laughs> right, whatever. It said doing? poo fans in giant letters across the top. Are you doing two other students? They're on my students, face, kids. Yeah, they're, they're just like, like yeah, I'll do your photocopy, yeah. you loser. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy didn't show up the next day. What a legend, though. He's, he's probably the janitor. He's probably from Carp, Ontario, because our school bordered a rural area. And I feel oh. like farmers have bigger turds. Well, I think they do. It's the fiber. Yeah. Well, they just, yeah, they eat, they eat you know, more robust. Hardy. They eat yeah. a dinner at yeah. breakfast. Yes. And, and then at dinner, oh my God. Yeah. They eat two breakfasts. It's a bunch of dinners. <laughs> yeah. a second breakfast, they eat you call it. <laughs> <laughs> they eat everything until there's no more food. <laughs> Go to sleep and do it again. Is that the town you're from? Uh, I went to school, high school, in a place called Kanata, Ontario. Okay. And it was, uh, it was we were British, 
and they imported a bunch of British people because they wanted to have a Silicon Valley in yeah. Canada. And they were like, we're too stupid, but if anyone in Britain has a degree in science or computers or anything, you get here free. So my dad was like, I'll do it. <laughs> and then, uh, so that we were in these cookie cutter homes that where they built suburbs overnight. So your home looked exactly like your friend's house, but had different furniture in it. It was like the E.T. Well, that's what just, they have now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or what's that first movie that Matt Dillon did, End of the Edge of the World? Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. That one, it was, yeah, like no trees. Yeah, no, they no just time cut for it trees. out and just made every single yeah, enclave. Bought a bunch yeah. of farmland and stuck all these homes there. But we were with farmer's kids. And they had such an alarmingly different culture. So we were middle class. Our parents were educated. And we were into like fashion and punk and mods mm -hmm. and rockabillies. And they were just hosers, like hillbillies. They smoked. They, they'd wear their baseball hats on the very tippy, tippy top of their head. Like you could just... That's back in fashion. Is that back? Yeah, it's back. Like you just... And their hat would fall off. They wore their ski jackets in class. They never took their ski jackets off. And they were working class, and I loved them because they would ski at this place called Calabogie. But they'd ski in, like, jeans and a baseball hat and their ski jacket with a cigarette in their mouth and a beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, in America, so skiing, working, man. skiing is very bourgeois, but in, in, in carp at Calabogie, it was like, it was for hose heads. They're just yeah. like drinking beers, fucking skiing down the fucking hill. <laughs> fuck. It's very Canadian or like Michigan working man. Yeah, yeah. Canada doesn't really have a class system because it's such a new country. Right. So, like, golfing is for hillbillies. Yes. Like, they smoke and drink. and <laughs> Everybody does they have, everything. They have cut-off jeans on the golf course. Like, there's no, there's no elites. That's yeah, where everywhere like else that. you go. Like, well, golfing's for anybody now. Yeah. But at one point, like, you had to be... You had to be loaded. Well, Rodney Dangerfield was the first to break, break the glass ceiling on golf. Yes, he was. <laughs> and then anybody decided that they could be a slob. <laughs> he stepped golf. on a duck, and all yeah. of a sudden, I could do that, <laughs> too. People could yeah. golf. They're like, you could fart at a country club? Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. You could antagonize the guy from fucking, uh, what's that show? Mary oh, Tyler Moore? Mary Tyler Moore, oh, yeah. Joke. yeah. Ted Knight. Joke. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Comedy's so unforgiving, man. Oh, it's... <laughs> One pause and your bit's done. Route. <laughs> it's true, though. I mean, that really was what changed it all. Rodney? Now, well, yeah. And oh. now you can just... You can golf anywhere in Detroit, which is exciting. Because you can just go to, like... You can play... It's like a... It'll be a nice course, but you'll be surrounded in, like, crack houses. Right. And yeah. it's the best place you can golf. And in squats. Oh, it's the best. There's just a guy blowing another guy for crack, <laughs> and you're just teeing off. It was always so exciting. Is that, like, the extra rough? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, if your ball goes over there, you don't you're go like, after well, it. That's <laughs> the that's good it. thing about, about the decline of Western civilization is places like Detroit where you can just walk into a store smoking a cigarette, driving with a beer... Oh like, yeah, no one gives a fuck. It's the Wild West. No, as long now that downtown's a bit repaired, you can't really do it there. But anywhere else, like when we were kids, you the parents would just drive you drunk to like the boat races. <laughs> you bring they, your dog to the restaurant. You're throwing him scraps. Oh, they didn't care at all. Gives a fuck. Oh, you would walk into a store to buy weed. There'd be like two things of peanut butter <laughs> and Wonder Bread and like some old corn, and you'd be like, "Can I get a dime bag?" Like there, it was barely a front. Like it's <laughs> Not even trying. Yeah, no, because no, there's no reason to try. <laughs> like, yeah, they were just paying off the cop anyway. It's like the Bronx now. Like, no one cares where you go with your cigarette or your beer or your dog. Oh no! When, when I lived in Harlem, they were trying, and then the second COVID hit, they were like, "We're not trying anymore. Uh, this is no longer like Midway. We're, we're going back to old Harlem." It's kind of good for like tenacious people because you can figure out shit and do it your own way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's the losers that really suffer. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> well, it's kind of like culture altogether. Like the, the the kids that are hardy and and live that way and get to experience life and try to figure it out on their on their own, they're the ones that will survive when the shit hits the fan, right? Yeah, it's weird too because we're the champions of of you know bringing order back to the West, but. We built the West from right. scratch. We fought the Indians for 320 years. So if you want to go back to zero, I'm fine. <laughs> I'll do great. It's you that's going to be fucked because mm -hmm. you can't do anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you artists. <laughs> so those, those employees of Twitter that were like, I walk in at 12. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, those. And then go on my smoke break. And then smoke I go bowls. back in and then I eat my fruit. Yeah, my, my yogurt, my non frat yogurt. And then I do a little bit of work for 15 minutes. And then I go onto the roof and do some yoga. And it's like, yeah, you're going to die.
Yeah, you're be murdered you're die on the roof. From the only thing keeping you alive. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if take a day off, you starve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, which is fun. I wonder how they're doing now. If you see these chats amongst like super lefty Zoomers and they go, what do you want to do after the revolution comes? <laughs> about 90% of them talk about designing uniforms for their comrades, for their new Gestapo, whatever it is, little epaulets and fucking pins and stuff. That's what they all want to do. Good luck. No, you're a farmer. You're fucking, yes. yeah. You're out <laughs> what do you want to do when that happens? Uh, eat. Yeah. That's probably what you you're want You're harvesting do. soy, I'm afraid. Yeah. Sorry, no uniforms needed. Well, no, you're, you're actually what they would call a slave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really the term for it, yeah. is what yeah. you're going to seizing be. Seizing the means of manufacture is uh, you. Oh, yeah. You are the means of manufacture. <laughs> you have been yeah. seized. Yeah. <laughs> Told you so. Yeah, sorry. We tried to warn you. All right. You but got you, your communism. You wanted to be all painting about it. <laughs> <laughs> Commies hate artists. I wish artists knew that. Yeah. They don't. They don't care at all. They, they, it's kind of funny because a lot of commies consider themselves to be artists. Yeah. Right. It seems. Yeah, like Billy Bragg. It's Billy ironic. Bragg would not have a career in the socialist utopia that he won't shut up about. Right. Yeah, fair. <laughs> <laughs> be toast. None of these people would. Yeah. Be gone. Yeah. They're all starving in the gulag or on an island where they don't get fed. It's communism. Okay. Well, think of any communist, communist leader. Where does it work out for artists? <laughs> yeah. They, they have the propaganda they posters, that very particular style of like the, the profiles where they're like this, you know? Yes. Yeah, but I feel like that wasn't up to the artist. <laughs> yeah. And that's <laughs> one guy. Yeah, to one, them. <laughs> one guy's yeah. employed. Yeah, one guy. He does all the murals. Yeah, and like you hear the first guy gets shot once he goes a little bit in his own direction. <laughs> once he adds a mustache. So like that <laughs> shade of red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once he makes color. <laughs> <laughs> that means happy, you're dead. You are using purple? Yes. Do you think money grows on trees? <laughs> what, what, what is this? <laughs> is this purple? Bring your Red, family. Beige, taupe. Yes. That's your palette. <laughs> yes. Three. Yes. What is. <laughs> Communism is not good for anybody in the entire system, like, not even the elites. Because you think, like, oh, the elites would have all the power and all the money. Even they get whacked. Yeah, yeah. You look at these North Korean generals with their hats that are fucking comical, like this big. And then they have, like, a medal that's the size of a dinner plate. Yes. And then 700 other medals, like, go down their legs. <laughs> and those guys, you, okay, so you're the elite. You right. get all the food. You're not hungry. But you fucking fart on a Friday. Pew, yeah, you're done. Fuck you. You're been assassinated dead. in an airport. <laughs> just walking around dressed as a Christmas tree all day. Like a target. <laughs> you're friends with the wrong guy's brother, and you're fucking... <laughs> yeah, you're Even out. Kim Jong-un's brother. Exactly. Yeah. He got fucking poisoned, didn't he? Yeah. In like the weirdest way, they like hired a at TikTok the airport? lady yeah, two to like put at the poison. airport. Yeah, they put poison on their hands. They didn't tell the ladies, and they were like, "Hey, you're gonna do a prank it's for a prank show." And they went up and touched him on the face, and were like, "Oh, it's a, a prank." And then he uh, died because yeah. they had poison on their hands. That's hand. a good prank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, good. what a surprise. Well, the prank. <laughs> it's the brother of the Oops. king. Yeah, the first, exactly. And he's toast. The first prank being the only prank show in the history of communism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, surprise, you did. I have a pitch for a prank show. Yeah. <laughs> Hear me out. Yeah. We assassinate the siblings of various dictators using hand poison. Huh? What do you think? <laughs> oh, this is good. The various this. bombs. I like it. Funny. But Sounds bombs. funny. What is the prank? We rub hands on face. <laughs> oh, that's funny. He infects <laughs> skin. He gets lesions and begins to bleed to death. What happens to bleed. girls? They also die. Yeah. <laughs> All these socialist comedians are, that are socialists are like, what will my job be? Uh, you're in a prank show where uh, you put poison on your hands yes. <laughs> and you murder people. Yeah. Oh, you think the that, utopia you were looking for? That's not really what I was going for. You don't get the antidote. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You don't get special gloves. Right, yeah. And then when you die, we move on to the next comedian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if there's one thing that uh, communism loves, it's comedians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Telling you what to think. Cheering everyone up is really palatable. That's really <laughs> profitable. <laughs> I'll start with like cruise ship performers and like work yeah, their just, way up. Yeah, yeah, just different. <laughs> yeah. End on mimes. Oh, I don't even know what to do with you. Well, I hope they do that in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't work. They never touch you. Start with mimes with the hands. Yeah. yeah you can't get the gloves, poison though. on them if you don't oh, touch them. <laughs> Miracle made. 
Dude, they're the best. They're the best. Oh, who tried these sheets? They're amazing. They're amazing. I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> oh, I thought I you thought. stuffed them down there. I wrapped them around my torso. Oh, I, I thought you. That's a good idea. That's, that's why I look look. plump. I'm not fat. You looked very comfortable. It's heaven on earth. That's why I also look that way. No, it's because I have uh, early onset diabetes. And I like carbs. But it's also why I enjoy Miracle Made sheets. Mm hmm. So comfortable. I actually, I finally got them in the mail. I finally put them on the bed, and they're great. They're really, they're like, they, they sleep uh, cool. You know, they, they uh, yeah. if you're like a hot sleeper, kind of a hot sleeper, I sweat, you know? Yeah, I sweat a lot. They actually sleep cool, so that's nice. They have self cooling like, properties. Is that right? Yes. I hear they're influenced by NASA. They are. That's, yeah, inspired by NASA. That's crazy. Oh. Mm -hmm. And if you go to trimiracle.com slash normal, you get a sweet discount. Yeah. Is it like the part of NASA where the, the astronauts pee in their suits? I don't think so. I think it's where they sleep comfortably in their suits. You oh. could pee in these sheets and they're self-cleaning. That's right. The bacteria wicks right off. 97% right of them. Mm -hmm. So only 3% of your urine would be left. <laughs> you could recycle that. Yeah. yeah. Which you can drink in space now. That's renewable. Perfect. Go to trymiracle.com slash normal <laughs> to try it today or gift it to someone uh, this holiday season. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Save over 40%. And if you use our promo normal at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee, guys. So 30 days. If you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. You're not going to need it. Um, upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash normal and use the code normal to claim your three-piece towel set and save over 40%. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash normal and Pro. treat yourself. Where are you from? Me? Alabama. <laughs> Do I have a country <laughs> accent? Well, you said in the opening, you said pronounced benched, binched. Binched. And you just said dill for deal. I don't know, man. Not Southern? I'm like a citizen of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Culture, man. You a military kid? All kinds no. of stuff. No, I'm from here. You're from Dallas? Yeah, yeah. that's this country. Then. Oh, okay. That's a little Texas <laughs> accent. I guess I'm learning what a Texas accent is. Get a little bit of that twang, which is something that's dying out. I feel like that's that's. Dude, I think dying. accents are dying in yeah. general. It's kind of sad. I know. I hate it. Like that. That uh, the, unless it's a that New York accent, one. I was just doing. If you meet a guy that's like, "What the fuck, yo, yo, you, you, are you fucking crazy?" You'll meet his son, and his son's like, "Hi, right." My dad's gone. really angry. His last name's Maniscalco. Aren't <laughs> <laughs> you <a> embarrassed? <laughs> or even in London, like East London, that whole, like, "What you doing? Don't muck about." You meet <laughs> that guy's son, and yeah. he's like. What, what are you doing? Don't muck about. And you're like, what happened to your fucking Cockney shit? The Cockneys are, they're dying out. I went to the UK and I went to this uh, pie and mash place and there were like two Cockney guys and everything around them. You went to every restaurant? <laughs> no. Well, no, I was going to say like everywhere around there is not Cockney at all. And they were telling me about how that kind of, that accent is almost yeah, It's a Jamaican gone. thing now. Like yeah. Bear Grylls is it's actually lots a lot of, yeah. of girls. And uh, yo, and and wagwan, and you see that in Toronto too. Jamaicans taking over Toronto. Really interesting. And I think it's because Jamaicans are maniacal sociopaths, so they tend to be <laughs> the, the, the toughest people in town. <laughs> so if you're a kid and you want to sound tough, you want to sound like the toughest guys. Uh, well, and that is a that's they are the toughest thing. people in the in that area, right? In England, yeah, yeah. Well, and and Toronto, and fucking probably New York too. Yeah, that's probably true. Jamaicans are murderers. Yeah. <laughs> Quote Buju Banton Murderer Blood is upon your Murder. shoulder Kill I today You will not kill I tomorrow I've just Hardcore met Hardcore people man I've just met them in Jamaica Where they're usually just Getting you food Well in Jamaica They don't <laughs> Very nice They don't mess with white people Because they no. know where your bread and butter So it's the most dangerous place on earth But I feel totally safe there because no one fucks with me because I'm paying the bills. No, the whole way to the resort's a bit terrifying. Because you're like, why are the cows all skinny? Why is there a boat on its side? <laughs> yeah, you're like, no right. one, no like, one's... Wait, and they're like, you want, you're like, you want to rent a jet ski? And you're like, I, I don't. It's the last no. thing I want to do. I got a buddy who moved there for life, which is so dumb. He went there, he was having like a, a midlife crisis, and he's like, I got to figure out what I want to do with my life. Yeah. And he just moved there. He's into black chicks. Okay. And uh, we're driving along. Well, there's your reason. Near Jungle Montego figure, Bay. Right? Yeah. He goes, you can fuck anyone you want. Just buy them a weave. They're five bucks. Right. So we're, we're driving down the highway. <laughs> What's near the Montego shit? Bay. This is, I'm just saying quotes. I'm not, I'm not, this is not an opinion. Um, I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying I like this or it's good or bad. 
And he's like, you know, you always talk about the West is the best. The East is, and he thinks Jamaica is the East, which is arguable. I don't think it is. It's the decrepit West. And I go, Jeff, as I'm talking to you, I'm looking at your face. And behind you, I'm looking at mountains and mountains of cinder blocks with rebar just randomly sticking. Like Jamaica is unfinished. It's constantly mm. half done projects. It blows. And in the 1960s, before independence, it was a fucking oasis. And they wrecked it. Yeah, yeah I, I've only gone there for weddings. For <laughs> destination <laughs> weddings. And that's the only reason I've ever been there. You don't like to just hang out there? I, just, I wore a streets. captain's hat and gaiters and walked around like a dick. Great. That's, was, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, and it was when I was drinking, so it was fine. I was, I was, we rented a house once and, and blend in. Yeah. I mean, same really... dude, Jeff uh, shows up and he's like, I go, you want a bud? There's bud in the fridge. And he's like, dude, where the fuck did you get bud? And I'm like, <laughs> I, they asked me what kind of beer I want. I said, bud, it's my beer. And he goes, do you want to know how fucking expensive that is? They can't, they don't have a bud brewery here. You're buying, you're, and I was like, what the fuck? So I ran to the butler guy and I was like, what's going on with this beer? And he goes, well, Mr. Mc Mr. Gavin, you told me that you want uh, Budweiser, so I go to the international store and I have it imported. And then as a Scottish man, like we put Jews to shame, I was like, uh, slowly tell me how much they are. Oh. He's like, well, these, I mean, I guess each one is about $12. You get a, you get a 10 pack for a 120, you know. I'm like, American dollars? I'm drinking $12. <laughs> get me red stripe! Red me. What have you done? I was going to say that's all they horrible. had. It was Red Stripe the whole Ugh. time. And it's a great beer. I love it. I hate yeah. Red Stripe. But when you're there, it's it's the cheapest. Well, it's it's their beer. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice quality garbage beer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, li I like I like I Red that. Stripe. I hate it. I liked anything that got me drunk. When did you oh. last have a beer? Uh, 2009. So, like, how do you, does this look like me sucking on Eva Mendez's tits? Yes. So you're just looking at me. <laughs> I have Eva Mendez's tits, and I'm just like, yep. And you're like, wow, that guy and Eva Mendez really get along. Yeah, I certainly. That's, I'm never getting that. Nope. That's not my. That's not a thing I can have. Nope. And there's part of me that's like, remember when you used to rape Eva Mendez? <laughs> <laughs> so in your past, yeah. but she didn't want to go to prison, so you restrain yourself. <laughs> so every time I swig this in front of you, you're watching Pamela Anderson jerk me off. <laughs> Essentially, wow. current day Pamela Anderson. Oh, she's yeah. fine now. Yeah, yeah I think she's getting older. She's when you get older, your tastes expand. Listen, like I was talking I, to your producer, know. and she was like, "Yeah, when I was fat, I had these big tits, and now that you know, I'm getting older, and and I was thinking about having them tucked up a bit, and I was like, no, when men get older, they don't want me. nice tits. <laughs> we want like penises <laughs> hanging down." Yeah, you want you want your your grandmother's banana tits. I want them, yes, I want them worked. A you know? I want them to have done some stuff, fed some kids. Yes, I want them to hit me in the face. Stretch marks. I want them to leave the room. <laughs> you don't want to feel embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> and when no. we get older, they're like, "Oh my god, my cellulite!" And you're like, "Coincidentally, Mother Nature makes me like cellulite now." Oh. So I did. It's funny how that works. I did a TV show with Pamela Anderson. She was gorgeous. Really? Yeah. And we used to watch Baywatch all the time and Jerry Springer and get high after school. Shut so, the fuck up. Yeah. So you and Pamela Anderson wait. used to watch Baywatch? No, no, no I didn't know where that is. Because <laughs> of that, would be the best. Would be weird. School. Yeah. Can you imagine? She, she we would just like, meet up. Like, hey, so this scene, we were super hungover. Yeah. And we had to be there at six in the morning. <laughs> yeah. She was super hot then. I was fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> just with a trapper keeper on my lap. Pamela Anderson hey, Pam. seems like one of the coolest people in she, the world. She was super nice. Like I really thought she was, and she honestly, Arbor. she was, she was very funny in what was written for her. Smart, chill, activist. I, I, totally I liked her. Pro Julian Assange. She moved back to her childhood home now. I liked her. Really? with goats. Quality yeah. chick. I liked her. Honestly. Eva Mendez too seems really funny and. I love. She's not we were, doing much. Like she's we were probably gone about her and the done other real guys. life. 
were we talking about her and the other guys yesterday sure. and how much I oh, love yeah, that movie? Hideous. So good in that role. <laughs> hideous in that movie. <laughs> Remember that movie? That yeah. scene where Mark uh, uh, Wahlberg. Yeah, Wahlberg, Wahlberg is like, wait, how the fuck <laughs> are you married? Her? She's hideous. <laughs> just, he's like, if you come in here dressing like a hobo. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, like, clean yourself up. I know, up a she's little. annoying. She's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> then he just, he's ballet dancing with her at one point. He goes, well, how did you learn that? He goes, I did it to make fun of the gay kids down the street. <laughs> so you learned how to dance, sir. It's a good movie, dude. <laughs> it's quality, man. Yeah, it's... <laughs> and I actually talked to a guy in Hollywood who was running Paramount at the time, and I he I, she wasn't in as many movies, and she had just done that um, movie with Ray Liotta, and it's really good. Oh. Um, Ray Liotta and Ryan Gosling, and um, the Pine the Trees thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. motorbike. Beyond He's the, on the on the beyond bike. Beyond the pines. Beyond the pines. Beyond the pines. The pines. Yeah. And he was like, "Yeah, she's just not as good looking as she once was." And I'm like, "This what? is why Hollywood is the worst place on earth, because you have yeah, like one of the most arguably beautiful women who've, who've like ever lived." I would kill my entire family on Christmas morning <laughs> to be <laughs> able to go into a bathroom that she forgot to flush. And flush the toilet. 13 incher. It was to, to, it was Eva. To flush her 13 incher, I would say goodbye to my three children and my wife. I always wondered if the person who like produced the 13 incher immediately thinks, wow, I could fit a dick this big in my butt. <laughs> it's that's gotta be your first I mean, thought, right? I mean <laughs> we have the evidence. Yeah. We have the fingerprint. We have proof. We have I mean proof. if it came out, it's gotta be able to go in. I, yeah. There was a guy named Taylor Mead. Of the Mead paper fortune. Yeah. He was big in the 60s. He was in a lot of Andy Warhol movies. I think he's dead now. And he would be in East Village in New York at the, my bar, uh, Max Fish. And I was kind of drunk one night. And I was like, Taylor, let me ask you something. He's gay. I never got the, like, big dick thing. Like, if you're a f I would want, like, a grain of rice up my ass. Like, wouldn't you want this? I would want a f I don't know. I don't want like my ass to be ripped to shreds, right? And he went insane. He started going, I hate lazy thinking. And he started trashing the bar. The bouncers had to like put him in a headlock and drag him out backwards as he was screaming, <laughs> I hate lazy thinking. <laughs> and I'm like, it's not lazy. I still, <laughs> I just I stand by it. This was like 10 years ago and I still stand by my question. I just feel that your anus would be ruined, but now that I see that you're so willing to hurt your body with <laughs> bottles, <laughs> I see. I get it. You're into injury. He never answered it. <laughs> if you want to fuck me in the ass, you better go grab a grain of rice, because uh, that's what we're dealing with here. Those are my parameters. Yeah. Tic -tac. Go grab a, go strap a Tic Tac on <laughs> something around it. <laughs> you're like, look, I'll do it to not be a homophobe. And even then, even, <laughs> even when you get the Tic Tac on your strap on, I'm going to be like, Oh boy, here we go. Oh, that's a load already. Oh. I just don't want my doctor to go like, well, you have impacted bowels because you know why. <laughs> Stop making the face. Like, like come on, stupid. let's be honest. You made that joke before. Have I? Is that one of your hits? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't it know. It smells <laughs> like a hit. I don't know. I've honestly never made yeah, it. I like it. that down. <laughs> that smells like a hit. <laughs> I could be. <laughs> definitely, be definitely could be. I uh, well, let's talk. I want to talk about this real quick. An influencer on TikTok, which I don't even know what that means, yeah. uh, wanted to educate about Tourette syndrome. Uh, uh, oh yeah, Balin, Balin Dupree, uh, and the influencer uh, living with Tourette is an influencer living with Tourette syndrome. Appeared on Cuomo, at uh, which is a new show, obviously. Oh, the Chris. Uh, Chris Cuomo. 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 Chris. Yeah. yeah. Quick story. Yeah. He's on some weird network. News Nation. Yeah. News Nation. And then you look it up and it has like 60 million followers. Yeah. But you never heard of it. I right. think it's got to be bought, right? It's got to be like yeah. a Chinese thing or something. Yeah. they've yeah, got, it's, it's, a, it's a sus network for it's, sure. It's like all Pakistani yeah. bots, I would assume. Hey, I was just watching. What's it called? News Nation. Oh, do you guys see they that thing on News Nation They actually hosted the most recent debate. Did they really? Yeah, they did. Yeah. See? Yeah. yeah. They also did the David Grush interview. That was where David Grush came from, the UFO guy, all this disclosure stuff coming from News Nation. No one has oh, ever no. come up to you and said, did you see that thing on News Nation? <laughs> right. Well, they're about to because this clip is fucking awesome. But they'll say normal world. Yeah. Let's watch it. Now, I was first introduced to Balin. I thought she was just a great comedic actor. 
and, you know, doing blue material, whatever you want to call it. Corinne, uh, who does all the styling here, said, no, you're wrong. This is the real deal. Then my 13-year-old, Cha-Cha, said, no, this is who she is. And then Dusty said it. And everybody knew her but me. Uh, and now I'm totally devoted to what she's doing because it's so brave. All right, kid. Thank you very much for coming on. And what do you hope you can do by taking the risks that you take so people can understand what you're dealing with? <laughs> I'm sorry, do you mind repeating the question? <laughs> Ooh, fuck off. Why do you? And then I also get what? very evil people that would comment and say, like, go fuck yourself, Chris. Lick your baby mean and blam up your ass. Butter your own biscuit, fat ass. That have told me <laughs> that my parents deserve no. to die in a car accident. It's Cartman. <laughs> There's I so knew much a Tourette's girl. She say. worked at her place and I caught her faking it. Yeah, Tourette's? it's not her faking it. Let's officially call bullshit on Tourette's. Oh right no, now. I think it's a real thing. <laughs> but she said it's probably a real thing. But I caught her for sure. She was in the break room and nobody was around, and I was like, "But f you, Chris seems specific. Yeah, yeah very specific. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doesn't seem disease. I also, I get a weird pervy vibe uh, off of Chris there. Remember, Howard Stern would have some girl on from some show that you've never heard of, like mm -hmm. Kiss. Yeah, and it's like some like sitcom on some Paramount app, and she's this really pretty like sixteen year old who's making out with dudes, and you're like, why the fuck? Why is this a guest? <laughs> why is his thirteen year old daughter named Cha Cha? Yeah, Cha Cha. A, what is that? Like I was Cha -cha? talking to my daughter, Cha Cha. Oh, I. It's Cha -cha. <laughs> she, her name's probably like Charlene, and we're supposed yeah, to know yeah. her as Cha Cha. Look here, publicly, just call her Charlene. We're just named after a Dennis Miller tag. Ugh. Remember, Cha -cha. remember him coming upstairs after COVID? We yes. saw him in the Hamptons, mm. hanging out, getting in shit, and then he goes back into hibernation, pretends he's emerging like Jesus, mm -hmm. and he's doing like some weird gestures to his kids, like, "Hey, I'm just gonna say hi to you. Say hi to you. I'm not gonna touch you." And you're just like, your wife and children hate you. Oh, they detested him. Very weird world he lives in. You suck. They didn't have COVID. I think he just had to report the news from home, and they were like, we have to make sure the molester stays downstairs. <laughs> Butt-ass naked in the background of his wife's TikTok or whatever that oh, was. Oh, that's that what it was. Yeah, yeah, yoga. Yeah. Because they found oh, out about yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is very normal. It was Dude. Matt Lauer was caught first, and then all of a sudden right. he got real defensive about something. <laughs> and then people no, thought and his brother had nipple rings. Yeah. Andrew and Chris do that New York Classic. thing where they're like, yeah, we're kind of, uh, oh, yeah. we know some guys that can do some things, but I don't like to dwell. No, dude, your fucking grandmother was the mob. Your dad was a pussy who, like, he was an arsonist and he got caught. And the mob beat the living shit out of him because the, you shouldn't have got caught. Something right. like that. Yep. So they were like... The, the the male half of the Cuomo family are, like, tangentially related to the mob because they were loser arsonists that got beat up. <laughs> 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 but they they portray it as, like, yeah, we were with some pretty big guys. Uh, dude. No, no, your your mom was the, the mobster, dude. You're a fucking nerd. They're like, you ever heard of New York? We ruined it. <laughs> yeah. it's Look at nice. us with the brothers. Yeah, you don't yeah. think I can take Come care on. of some things? I killed 17,000 old people. Uh, yeah. You don't think I got it? Yeah, that was me. Uh, they told me the old people are susceptible to death. You know I that thing it. with the Put thing? Them in there. They're sick. Uh, the 17,000 people? I mean, am I exaggerating? Was it 17,000? It was up there. It was, really it was, it was. That's a lot of people. brought in a boat. Uh, I said, nah. Remember the blood? It's actually, wait a minute. That's actually more than any mobster could ever dream of. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's true. He, yeah. yeah. And he did it while wow. convincing everyone it was right. Yeah. And they were, remember they were talking about him like, you're going to be the president of the United States. Uh, you're going to take down yeah. Trump. And uh, what's her name? That old hag was talking about uh, Cuomo mania. And I'm a Cuomo sexual. Cro yeah, oh, Cuomo yeah. Sexual. The Cuomo sexual thing yeah, was going on for that, a that while. Chick with the dried up ovaries. Uh, um... Which one? It's I know the name too, so many. and I'm blanking. She's, she's one of the most successful authors in American history. She had a show, a uh, talk show like this with a little midget Mexican uh, who died. Chelsea uh, Handler. Chelsea, Chelsea Handler. Handler. Ah, yeah. She was all about I'm a Cuomo sexual and blah blah blah, and they, he was he was their star. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then. Whoosh. Yeah, he's he's a, now he's on News Nation. It's a monster. <laughs> now stars. he's trying not to giggle at girls with dreads on his show. Well, yeah, after his daughter Cha Cha's dead, dead like, face. Yes. Well, and that's he, Chris. He said, I was talking about Andrew. Oh, sorry. But yeah, yeah it's confused. the same cult. Yeah. But isn't it yeah. amazing how 
Yeah, Chris was the news media. Their people yes. are such fucking losers. Who, Chris, uh, who knows? Chris is the news media. Chris was the news media, right? They, the other they, one was they, like, yeah. they bring out Gavin Newsom, and you're like, Gavin, am I dumb? Gavin Newsom ruined California. I just assumed this poor bastard was like like Andrew Cuomo. Like, you ruined it, you uh -huh. fucked up, and you're going to go into hiding. Uh, sucks to be you. Bye. And then you ask the Dems who they're working on. They're like, we have a guy named Gavin Newsom. Right. And you're like... Way. He's done. He's Andrew Cuomo. He's done. Who I always mistake with the Prime Minister of Canada for some reason. They are the same fucking person. All the time. I, whenever I hear both their names, I'm like, wait, are we talking about which guy? They have that slimy charisma that you know like works on the dumbest people. Yeah, they're called himbos. They're hot moron. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met a California person that likes Gavin Newsom. No. They all hate him. Dude, Katie Hopkins told me, I've been to San Francisco in like 15 years, but Katie Hopkins told me when you walk on any street in San Francisco, it's like an ice rink because of the feces and yeah. grease and urine. Like your feet slip as you walk across the street. Well, that's LA. Like that's when LA you go too. To LA, yeah. There used to be some sense of like magic there. And then you go there now and it's just like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's horrible. Covered in human grease. They greased California. Basically, they had to shoot five people in tents to give Macaulay Culkin yeah. a star last week. <laughs> like and you still see tourists with their little kids going, come on, kids, let's go look at the stars. Yeah, and they're like, you want to like that anymore? Go away. You want to meet, meet Spider-Man with his big <laughs> hood erection? <laughs> Why do these pussies allow these tent towns in their neighborhood? Like, just, you wait till they go panhandle, you spray them with lighter fluid. I'm not advocating this. This is a hypothetical scenario. No. One might. You this is a movie you this saw. This is a movie I thought of where you spray them with lighter fluid and then just light them up. I yeah. Mean, it's just a tent. Well, it's because there's not enough lighter fluid anymore. <laughs> That's, That's too expensive. <laughs> they can't afford it. Why well, it, it's so sad though like when you see it like uh, when you saw it 20 years ago you were like skid row you know mm -hmm. if you did have a tommy gun it could have been fixed <laughs> <laughs> but now there's, there's no it's everywhere it's infected the entire city it's all skid row i think a lot of these bums are like they see this red carpet and they're like maybe i should be a bum maybe i should yeah. be a meth head the government seems to endorse it yeah they get paid for it well, yeah it's yeah. a viable lifestyle it's like being a plumber there's an actual there's an actual red carpet in front of the Chinese theater. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's rolled out for you to live on. Okay, yeah. all right, I'll be a bum. I mean, that's not the worst. Hopefully, I'll forget about the part where my dad raped me. <laughs> can't can't well, seem to forget that part though. I think they do. Sad. Maybe they don't. You think they do forget their dad raped him? Some of them. Ideally, some of them. Fentanyl doesn't help though. No. Well, the ones in porn make a good, you know, it just depends on how far you go in it. Mm. That used we to be we a, need to bring back loony bins. They, they need to be in, yes. this, in the country. They need guys who work that are six foot four, wearing white shirts and white pants, like yep. one floor of the cuckoo's nest. Is it states that have the rights? Because Reagan gave it to the states, and then every state was like, ah, oh, we're not going to be responsible. Well, the problem, now. too, is these towns don't want the loony bin in their town. Right. Yeah. My wife kind of went to a loony bin. I went to one. Really? Yeah, I did. <laughs> did, you, did you find that like it, you benefited it was from a it? Juvenile, but did you benefit from it? Uh, no, they called. They realized I was just an alcoholic, and I ended oh. up. In a, <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, the people well, that was who I was issue, with it certainly had issues. So it was like interrupt girl or whatever. Like you were in. <laughs> it was a, Dave interrupted? <laughs> Dave. <laughs> I looked just like her. You were in like a, a white cell. room. Did you have white pants? No, no. I had a roommate. Like it was a Jew. It was oh, a juvenile. Yes, the famous roommate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. I roomed with a shaky kid who thought he was a werewolf. Uh, yes. <laughs> really? Yes. Where do you? Yeah. Um, but it was after they do check you, uh, check you in, and make sure. I, but it was actually co-ed at really? that time. How was there not fucking rampant? Yeah. Fuck? Um, it has to be. There's guards and everything. <laughs> That's the same as the guards are. Same as juvenile. Uh, rehab. I have to go poo. How about you? Oh, I'm sure there is rampant. I'm sure it happens. But there's also co-ed re rehabilitations for juvies at the time. But that's not in Michigan anymore either. I don't think you can count that as a loony bin. You went to a, a juvenile rehab. No, no. I went to a loony bin first, then a rehab. Oh, really? Yeah. So what percentage of the people at the first spot were crazy? Uh, well, there was a girl who... Saw it open and I uh, sharpened an ice cream scoop. Her dad was molesting her. 
Uh-huh. And then when he was passed out drunk sleeping, uh, she took it and took his eye out. I'm on her side. Yeah, and that's honestly, not crazy. Yeah. That's not crazy. Yeah. I said, <laughs> that's this totally is what happened. It's I was, called self-defense. I said, good for you. And they go, Dave, we don't encourage violence. And I was like, yeah, but she's great. And uh, <laughs> apparently that was a big problem for me to encourage the fact that what she did was right. No, I'm sorry. She also violence wasn't in jail. Like they, I think she was there, though, more for PTSD and like mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the she guy who also I was know with, that she's a hero. Yeah. Yeah. I thought she was great. She was 13. And but the guy who I was with legitimately thought he was a werewolf. He was fucking crazy. And then uh, it, I'd say it was a good percentage of them were absolutely nuts. Can I say something? I shouldn't yeah. probably say. It's fine at this point. <laughs> yeah. I heard some gossip about Dana Lash's husband, Chris Lash. Okay. Uh, he has white hair, and he's had it since he was very young. Something scared him. And Greg Gutfeld goes, "Wow, you got white hair. That's pretty rare." And he goes, yeah, well, something happened. And obviously Greg goes, Traumatic. what happened? Oh. And he goes, I saw a werewolf. Really? And Is Greg Gutfeld real? was like, what? I believe that Greg is telling the truth and, Gr- and Chris Lash believes he's wrong, but he believes that his hair went white when he saw a werewolf. It's possible. And then By the way, he watched Fright Night. I want to go like, even farther. The crash test. I want you to know. I want about. you to know that werewolves don't exist. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they might. Like the bar- hey, they absolutely know. do not exist. I need to see facts on I this. Was this is Gavin. This is a thing. I, I got attacked by the kid. I promise you, he wasn't a werewolf. Wolves this exist. Was a kid. Wolves. Wolves are a thing. People. Uh, crazy people exist. Correct. Yes. Yeah. But a man <laughs> who <laughs> turns into a man wolf. Uh, during full moons, and his his face goes. <laughs> that's not a thing. But have you seen Thriller? I mean, it. In fairness, <laughs> yeah, I've seen. That's that. not a documentary. That was really no. He did become something. <laughs> no, no, no. Thriller is a video that is but the last is part. He fictional. turns and he looks at the camera. No, no, and his guys, eyes are yellow. guys. Look, that's not a documentary. If you think of a slow process, he went from a cute young boy and became a monster. <laughs> Don't be deceived by <laughs> fictional videos. <laughs> Have you heard this thing? The this fucking Jack Nicholson movie. The Zoomers are pushing where they're like, yeah, a lot of buildings are made by uh, ancient civilizations. Yeah. And you go, uh, you mean like the pyramids, Stonehenge? I, yeah. I'm kind of open to that, but not really. And they're like, no, like the Lincoln Memorial, oh, like what? the Empire State Building. And they go, if you look at videos, you'll see that like the... Maybe not specifically the Empire State Building, but that kind of thing. So not an old building. That's, like what, 100 years old? Yeah. Yeah, like the ones we have proof of through photo. <laughs> the construction of? They'll go, well, no, they deny that. They go, uh, you'll notice whenever you see them, they're either uh, done or they're 99% done with a bunch of scaffolding. And then you Google it and you look up, like, the Louvre, and it's fucking, there's 100 photos of it being built. <laughs> So right. they think I, that ancient civilizations made the Chrysler Building and the Empire State Building, and we stumbled up across them and then built New York around them. <laughs> <laughs> so, like the guys in on, a very similar manner, by the way, you'll notice the buildings around those two buildings look very uh, similar to those yes, buildings. Yes. Like the kinda, guy, we the, copied them. The guys having <laughs> the guys having lunch on the steel beam. Yeah, yeah. Those guys are twelve thousand years old. <laughs> those fake men. <laughs> those cave people. That was in uh. the year negative two thousand. It's funny too when I make fun of this theory. Like I get these emails where people are like, "You're fucking mocking something you haven't even looked into." Like, no, I looked into it. Like the World Fair. Look Um, at the Chicago World Fair. They just demolished that for nothing? It's like the same people who think Helen Keller is fake. Like, we've become so uneducated that anything interesting from the past is like, that couldn't have happened. Like, no. No way. Uh, She probably was faking it. Hiroshima, Nagasaki. It's totally fake. I mean, she's a little bit, you know, come on. Well, I don't think she was fake. I I I think think she was probably real. I think she was real, but I think when she was putting her hand underwater and going, they weren't like she's saying a poem. Yeah. (laughs) I'm doing palindromes. Cable was I. I saw Elba. A man, a plan, a canal, Panama. Yeah, I'm not against. I actually should say I'm not against the possibility of Helen Keller being fake. Being a fraud. I, I am against 
Uh, <laughs> buildings, being <laughs> like the ones behind you, uh, being made yeah. by ancient civilizations. And yeah. I also want to be clear: I'm not against ancient civilizations. I think it's, totally it is it. possible that 12,000 years ago we had these elaborate cultures that well, built these amazing structures. That there's tons of evidence for now. that. The ones yeah. behind me uh, from Detroit, they were actually built uh, early in the 1900s and ruined by the 60s. Oh. Well, let alone. <laughs> They're ruined hey, by an Marxism. <laughs> yeah, let alone. Destroyed by unions. Yeah, let alone made <laughs> thousands of years before. <laughs> All right, we do have to uh, wrap up here in a second before we get to our final question, but uh, where can we find you, Gavin? Oh, uh, lots of places. I am going to be at the Yucky Yuckety Yuck Lounge in Azerbaijan. Uh, doing, I'm doing a four-day comedy tour there. Awesome. I'm also going to be in uh, Constantinople at the Laugh Warehouse. I'm doing a, a set there with uh, Bill Burr and Joe Rogan, which I'm very excited about. Awesome. And I'm also going to be at the uh, uh, Hilarity in uh, Northern... Uh, okay, I'm done. I'm, 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 <laughs> not Where, doing are <laughs> Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm lying. <laughs> I'm a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Where can we find your show, though? Oh, censored.tv. There Get we go. off my lawn. Yes. There you go. That's true. All right. We, we can find him there. <laughs> and it's a hilarious show. It's very funny. Yeah, you guys are great. And also, uh, you can check me out December 15th. Well, this is just this weekend. Yeah. Irving Theater, Indianapolis, Indiana. And then also the Funny Bone, the twenty first through twenty third. I want to get into the economics of like how much do you make for these shows? Do all right. It just depends on the venue. A thousand dollars? No more, yeah. Three thousand? I, I kind of want to get into it on the air. <laughs> like, uh, like Gina Bisconti. You know like uh, he, uh. He's got a nice place in Harlem. How does he pay for that? Uh, that I couldn't tell you. So, okay, we won't get into your nitty gritty, but yeah. a comedian of your stature, okay. what's a normal fee? Just depends 3, on the door deal. Like you would do a you would do 3, like a, a deal, and then you would depend on like the percentage of the door. So you're hoping for thirty five hundred. I do. I I <laughs> wouldn't shake a stick at it. Do they pay? And it's your flight. They pay for your. They they could. They pay for your flight in your hotel. <laughs> they might. Okay, so that's going to be a thousand. I thought you were just getting dinner. <laughs> I get I get mostly dinner. So tw you're hoping okay. for a net of 20... Gino gets paid in white. <laughs> you're hoping for a net of 2,200. I want a net, uh, yeah, 2,200. And what any, anybody hands me at the end of the night. Okay, well, Something like that, yeah. Okay. I, don't, I do not get the economics of comedy. It's uh, a lot, like plane tickets and hotel rooms. Well, there's and, no economics for and the a long time. time. In the like, time, you, you don't see yeah. your wife. Like you got to fly down there. Yeah. You're sitting in a hotel room. You you land at like 4 p.m. Your your show's at like 11, and you're like, I guess I'll watch seven movies. Yeah, well, you want to write, but then you know you're a comic, so you don't. But you can recycle the, your same eight good bits. Yeah. For years. For years. <laughs> Decades. The only time you can't do it is if, like, you go back to Nashville and they remember your bits. Well, then half the crowd's new, though. So you want to do a mix. Easy, yeah. easiest job in the world. It's, it's, depends. I just don't get the money. It depends if you're, you're on the, on what circuit. Like this, you probably get paid. What does Blaze pay you? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm guessing 120 A year? Yeah. Oh, boy, that'd be nice. <laughs> I think you make show? 120. I think for some bizarre reason, you make 110. Oh. Is that true? It's, uh, you know, less. You guys are we should Why is it less? It's, not, it's definitely not one. And I think your comedy show's net. Uh, I'm going to go with 1,100. Mm. That's a guess. That's, I, 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 th I think you think low of me. <laughs> No, I don't think low of you, Dave. I think low of comedy. Uh, you know, oh, I know. Uh, we've actually talked about like this. I've done it. Yeah, we've and, talked and, about this. And my income is not impressive. And I know I'm not a comedian, so obviously it's going to be Your shitty. Your income's been impressive. Let's not lie. Uh, no, my income on my show is good. Yeah. But when I do stand-up comedy, it's like abysmal. There's like 50 people in the room. 
Yeah, but you also have to you have to promote in a way that I've never seen anybody have to promote before. That's true. Well, we have to call it end racism. <laughs> <laughs> you have to add rainbows, and you have to announce the. Venue. I don't know if that's the crowd you want, you though. The that did happen once. In. These black people showed up, and they're like, "We're here for the end racism show," and I'm like, uh, "She is super racist." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, I'm getting tied up by the producer. Hyenas in Dallas, <laughs> January 18th. The Roxy in Rochester, January 15th. And Stand Up Live in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, that's it all right there. You can screenshot it. There you go. And uh, should we just go to the end of the world? Or Let's you, do it. Uh, right. You know, uh, Friday Night Tides and all that stuff. Uh, watch the Christmas special tomorrow. Yeah, yes, tomorrow's our please. Christmas special. It's Last so episode of the year. Uh, can't wait to show you. It's really funny. What's your favorite Christmas song? Best Christmas song ever. Uh, Darlene Love, uh, Christmas Time for the Jews. Uh, Bing Crosby, uh, White Christmas. You're both wrong. It's Father Christmas by the Kinks. You failed. Oh, that's, that's a good, good one too. Song. That is a good one too. Actually, Fairy Tale of New York. That is Sorry, also a great you. one. Incredible. The Waitresses. You're not a Darlene Love fan. I don't know who the fuck that is. From Phil Spector's Christmas album. <laughs> I like Soul. Yeah. Soul's gay. It's not gay. End of the world. <laughs> 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 You look very young in that. Which one? That was only uh, a few months ago taking that photo. Oh. Yeah, I've aged. Job is hard. Yeah, <laughs> just it's been a rough couple of months. Just really. Dude, I am getting so ugly. Like, <laughs> I, I was Mad Max for Halloween, and I I spent three hundred fifty dollars on the costume. I got the nice, shoulder pad and yeah. everything, and I got a wig. And I'm looking in the mirror, and I'm like, Why doesn't this look like Mad Max? And I realize, Oh, because Mel Gibson was a male model. Oh. In that movie, and I'm like an 20, ugly 30. old man. <laughs> <laughs> like I have this cobweb beard. I'm hideous. <laughs> keep the beard though. For sure. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Who invented that look though? You have to keep it. Yeah, but it's not. It's not like oh, there's a shoop mustache and a, yeah. a beard. It just looks like cobweb garbage. Like I look like the shit on my face. What's the book? The Death of Cool. Death of Cool. Death yeah. Of cool. Yeah. That's my book. Yes. Check that out if you've not read it. I'm getting ugly. Maybe grow the beard out more. It'll like even out. It won't look. I want to. I, I want to fuck in the mornings. I'm super horny the second I wake up. Oh, so you I don't think it's because I'm hungover. My body thinks I'm dying, so it wants to reproduce. But I, I, I like hit on my wife, and she's like, "Get off of me!" And then I took a picture <laughs> of myself right when I woke up, and it is a lot. Like you think this is ugly? You got to see this when it just wakes up. Like bald cat. Monster, naked mole rat, hideous. Just the the whole, just like the bloated, whole, puffy, the whole like twirl, just all oh, of it, just garbage cobwebs. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, nom, nom, nom. like, would you like to say nine? Uh, no, know. I would not actually. <laughs> How did you get in? <laughs> Did we, did we leave the door unlocked last <laughs> night? Is it a raccoon in my how, bed? How are you in my bed? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, my producer's yelling at me. All right. Hunter Biden's memoir has uh, come back to haunt him after oh. it was repeatedly referenced during the indictment. Uh, what <laughs> What should his, his memoir have been named, Quarter Black? No, 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 no. Uh, money laundering for dummies. Angela. Cocaine cowboy. I like it. Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> on the nose, but I think, uh, yeah. You know what you're getting? A little too obvious. I think, uh, no, it's a fair title. I'm going to go. I was just saying this earlier. Like, crack, I've done crack. It's I okay. I have two once, yeah. It's like a Red Bull. It's an Adderall. Yeah. But if you're really going to dive into it and leave the planet, like the way Hunter did mm -hmm. on his three-day drug bends, benders, you're trying to hide something. You're trying to escape something. Maybe you're trying to escape the fact that you It's true. Correct. And that's why I'm going to go with the wrong kid died. <laughs> 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 See, Join us tomorrow for tomorrow. our Christmas spectacular. Good night. Thank you, Gavin. Thank Good you, night. Dave. Thank Good you, night. Quarter Black Garrett. Thank you. Good night.